for IB Nuclear Physics. We're going to talk about some transmutations not related to the Ninja Turtles uh, and the equations that go along with it. And maybe most excitingly, we'll get to this E equals MC squared thing that maybe you've heard a little bit about before. And then hopefully we'll even get into some binding energy uh, graphs as well. So in the Middle Ages, you had alchemists, and they were trying to turn lead into gold and make one element become another. They couldn't do it because it was the Middle Ages, and people were stupid in the Middle Ages. In reality, we can do that in what's called an artificial transmutation. So let's say that we've got something like nitrogen, 14 here. And I drew seven protons, I think, and seven neutrons. And let's say that we're going to hit it with an alpha particle. You fire that alpha particle out of something. That's going to collide, and you're going to get some new stuff, new elements. And the equation for that is actually not very bad at all. Your alpha particle, your little fish, your nitrogen helps to put the numbers down here. You know, it's atomic number 7, atomic mass is 14. And you'd have to know some information about what happens. So let's say that you're told that when this happens, a proton goes flying off of there. And someone might ask, so what are you going to end up with out here? Well, you look at the math, and you know that you've got nine protons. And so you're going to have nine total on this right side. So you're going to have eight left over. And you've got a total mass of 18. So... 1 plus 17 gives you that 18, and you look up on the periodic table, your element would be oxygen. And ba-boom, you have transmuted and made nitrogen into oxygen by bombardment with an alpha particle. Now, a quick definition. The unified mass unit is basically the mass of a neutron or a proton. But the official definition, which is a little tedious, is that if you take a carbon-12 atom, one-twelfth of that carbon-12 atom is one U, or a unified mass unit. Why they chose carbon-12 divided by 12 instead of saying hydrogen-1 divided by 1, I don't really know, but go with this. Now, you will notice that if you have a proton at rest, it's a little bit more. And if you have a single neutron, it's also a little bit more. We'll later get into why that is due to binding energies and stuff. Really, one neutron is one U. One proton is one U, basically. Now here's something crazy. Let's say that you are going to make some nitrogen 14. And over here you've got your seven protons and your seven neutrons. And you add up their mass. Your mass, let's say, is going to equal M1. And then you slam them together, yeah, a little bit happier because they're in a more stable state now, and you get nitrogen 14. And this has a mass of, let's say, M2. Now the crazy thing is, the mass is not the same. Mass is not conserved. Everything you learned in chemistry doesn't apply in nuclear physics. And the first mass is bigger than the second one. And what we call the difference, let me show you, let me drag this on is whoop, the mass defect. Important definition. Take a minute and write this definition down. Now you may be wondering, where did this mass go to? Well, when those things slammed together, they were put in a more stable state, and they actually Adam gave off energy if you were to actually do that. And so what you get is... There's another important definition, write this down, is that binding energy. When those slam together, the energy is given off. That's called the binding energy, because if you want to separate those things again, you have to put that energy back in. It's hard to separate an atom. Now, another definition is, not a very difficult one to understand after those, is that if you want the binding energy per nucleon, you just take this first definition, and then you divide it by the total number of nucleons that you would have. So 
So just to remind you, let's say that we've got all of these constituents here for nitrogen 14, and they've got a mass M1, which is bigger than the mass of when you actually slam them together, the new atom is actually of a smaller mass. And if you subtract the mass of the constituents from the atom's mass, you get what we call this mass defect, which is a tiny, tiny change in mass. But if you're wondering, oh, how much was the mass changed? How much energy is given off? Some guy who you might have heard of, named Albert Einstein, came up with this fact that said the energy equals mc squared. And if you take that binding energy in kilograms and you multiply it by 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second squared, uh, which is the speed of light squared, you're going to end up with a crazy amount of energy, and that's where E equals mc squared came from.